Hi everyone, in this video we'll go over adaptive boosting and this is part 5 of Ensemble Techniques. It's a prerequisite that you cover Ensembles part 1 and part 4 which is going to be giving you all the basics to do the current video. So we'll cover the algorithm step by step in this. We have 7 steps to cover in this algorithm and we'll take an illustrative example as we go along. So first, we've been given a data which is labeled data which is in this particular case we've made a very simplifying assumption we have three features only and a label which is marked by Y and we have only 10 rows in this. We are going to be doing classification using adaptive boosting and our classes are identified either with plus or with minus across the rows. Okay so that's our data that's being given to us so let's take the first step. Step one is Adaptive boosting is going to be initializing the weights WI equally to the initial data set. So it is going to be assigning weights for each data point. And let's do that by 1 by n. So we have 10 points. 1 by n is about 0.1, which is 10%. So 10% of weight is given to each data point, And that's what our new column is doing. Okay. And then on top of it, it is going to basically be creating a null classifier, which is uh, based on the algorithm we have chosen, whether it is uh, decision tree based or whether it is regression based, an instance of the class would be initially created. Okay. So now let's go to step two. So step two is where you're going to be starting the iterative operation. So we have a for loop here, t equals to zero to t minus one. So what it means is the number of models sub-models sequentially we're going to be creating and training is indicated through this particular T. And the first thing we do is having taken this particular data set which is now have the weights in it, we are going to be generating a training data set by sampling with the weights. Okay, so that's an important thing. What do we do in this? So first what we do is if we have weights here which are based on correctly classified data points in which case the weights would be lower, then we fundamentally are going to be undersampling those rows. And then for those weights which are higher, we are going to be oversampling those rows. Okay. So in this particular context, the weights are even, so it is going to be using the same data set. However, if the weights were higher, then it would be oversampling. If the weights were lower, it would be undersampling. Okay. So that's an important thing, and it has built a training data with the same with this input data set it would generate 10 rows based on the weights okay it has sampled that now the next thing it does is it creates a, a weak learner GT so let's look at it a weak learner GT is going to be based on the algorithm we have chosen up front so if we have chosen addition tree or a access parallel algorithm which is how we will be explaining this particular example then it would create that instance and following which it would make a prediction for each of the row okay so each of the row let's assume it made a prediction and those predictions are coming in in the predictions column okay so now we do have the y which is the actual classification and then we have a prediction which is the classification from a weak learner that was built GT okay what we also will calculate now is the error if the error has occurred or not is marked by 0 or 1 if the particular row has no error then it's 0 if the row has error then it's going to be marked by 1 okay so that's all the fitting of a weak learner and calculating the error on a per error basis is actually going to be doing now let's go to the next step but before that let's just make one small note here is that Following steps onwards, we will be using adaptive boosting's exponential loss function. So there is an exponential loss function that is defined as a summation of e power minus yi, which is the actual labels of the y, times the actual function, which is the function prediction, which is the prediction column. That's how adaptive boosting's exponential loss is configured or, or modeled. So let's keep that in back of our head and then we'll see where it is being used from the next step onwards. All right, so when we go to the next step, what happens is we now will start creating something called as a lambda. So this lambda is a very important parameter. This lambda parameter is of two uses. One, it is defining the step size within the adaptive boosting. 
and we'll define and exactly highlight where that step size comes in. The second use of that particular lambda that we have currently in place is for the weights of each of the model. Okay, so when we put the models together, lambda will be the driving factor of the weight. So let's see how that works. So lambda is defined as half log of one minus et by et. So et is the weighted error term. Okay, so the error in here is getting weighted based on the actual weights for the given data row, data point, and is divided by the sum of the weights. So therefore, what et is actually is a weighted error term. In our particular case, the error term comes to be 0.3. That's because it is 0.3 by 1. Okay, so therefore it is 0.3. And our lambda, which is calculated as half of log 1 minus 0.3, which is 0.7 by 0.3, turns out to be 0.42. Okay, so let's go to the next step where now that we know the lambda, what we do is we are going to be creating a couple of identifiers for us. One is a weighting term, which is going to help us do uh, oversampling for incorrectly classified records. And then the second weighting term, which will be undersampling for the correctly classified records. Okay. So now using the lambda, what we do is we are going to be multiplying the weights of each of the term and with e power lambda in it. Okay. So what that means is when we calculate e power lambda, we get 1.53, which is going to be the magnitude with which oversampling will happen or in the magnitude to which the existing weights will get moved up. And then we also have e power minus lambda, which comes out to be 0 0.65, which is the magnitude with which these existing weights will come down for correctly classified uh, data points. Okay. So now let's see what happens. When we do this, the new weight term actually is calculated based on whether we correctly classified here or incorrectly classified. So let's take a look at this particular example, the first row, which was correctly classified. The earlier weight was 0.1. And now it is being brought, to a mag brought down by the magnitude of 0.65. So therefore, the new weight for that row is 0 0.065. However, let's take a look at the third row, which was incorrectly classified. Uh, earlier weights was 0.1. And then the new weight is increased by a magnitude of 1.53, therefore it is 0.53, okay? So that's how the new weight is calculated for each data point across the data set. Now let's go to the step six. Step six is about normalizations. So first let's look at what happens in uh, the step six is that we take the entire row, the new weight row, and we do know right now they may not add up to one. So what we do is we normalize it to a sum of one. So this is the normalized weights based on the current weights which we calculated in step five. Okay. The next step is very important, but before that, let's let's just highlight that the old weights that we calculated was 0.917, and then the normalized weights must always come to one. The next step is fundamentally going to be doing two things. One, it is going to be adding in and creating a new model within the loop that we have in place. So we have an iteration loop going on in which whatever model that what got created, which was the GT model, now gets added back to a previous model if it existed. If it didn't exist, then GT would be the first model. But this particular loop is going to be running in an iteration till we, the definition of t minus one is reached, okay? And the important thing to highlight here is the lambda t parameter, which I mentioned is the weight parameter of the given uh, model, is actually weighting the gt, which is the model being added back as an aggregation, okay? And then once this particular looping is complete, the overall final model is nothing but a sum of all the models we have created with their lambda multiplied as a weight. Okay, so let's look at that visually. What that means is let's assume we have created three models based on our access parallel system, and this is the original data set. Then we have for the first model, we have a lambda of 0.42, which is what we calculated. 
here we have actually drawn an axis parallel line where we have uh, plus signs in the left, the so plus misclassified R in the circles. Then when the second model was created, it focused on these three because they were overweighted within the sample. Now it went in and it created another axis parallel which, which split the system and it had an error of three negative points though it correctly classified the three positive points. And in this particular case, the lambda was 0.65. Then those particular three negative points were subsequently passed over as over, over sampled weights to the next model creation, which fundamentally classified most of the points correctly except for one negative point and two positive points. So we have stopped the iteration at, at model number three. So therefore, when we want to put them all together, what we do is each model is multiplied by its lambda. So in the first model's case, it's 0.42 multiplied the model's output of the classification plus 0.65 and whatever the classification comes out for model two plus 0.9 and then model three's classification output is coming in. So the overall sum of this, the sign of that particular thing will actually be the final sign of our predicted output when it comes to predicting based on the ensemble, okay? And this was the original data set for which we have made the axis parallel cuts, built the models, three ensemble models, and we have put them together, okay? So that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Do subscribe to the channel. And until the next video, goodbye and good luck.